glad to see you guys again. I'm going to talk about the new oil data. And what makes this interesting is pretty much like the whole oil exploration theory, there is a data exploration as a science, as a big practice that a lot of companies are getting into. And why not, right? OK, let's get to the next part. Interesting part, right? You have all these data islands or data sets, and you have to pull data across from all these apps and create those interesting reports and dashboards and whatnot. OK, let's get to the next part of it real quick. What does data exploration actually mean? It means you need to acquire data. The steps required here are then process the data. And when I say process the data, you're talking about creating models. Because you could pull up data from disparate systems. However, the fact that you're pulling in data from different systems essentially means you need to create models. And then once you process the data, the next step is actually visualization. It is a three-step process. You, this is clearly the whole path as far as data exploration is concerned. Why do you need analytics? Insights for better decision making. But then you get to this point of saying, hey, I have reports in all of my applications that I use in Zoho One. When all these application reporting modules grow up, they want to be Zoho Analytics. That's what it is all about. When it comes to uh, Zoho Analytics, right, we have this amazing integration set up as a part of Zoho One. Uh, and much before, uh, before the second release of Zoho One, you actually had to go inside Zoho Analytics, set up the connectors across all the different applications that we gave you, and you had to do a whole lot of background work. Now, we have taken that grunt work, and as a part of Zoho One, what happens is all that you need to do is enable Zoho Analytics, and automatically it knows what other applications you have invoked or started using within Zoho One, and then it starts processing data from all those different services, and you create all these nice-looking blended reports and dashboards. So I'm going to try this back to what Victoria was talking to you folks about in the previous session. She went through this IT services company. You have Zoho Desk that's getting used. You have Zoho CRM. There's a bit of Zoho projects in there. And then there is the Zoho Books piece of it where you generate invoices, get paid, and you know, track the transactions that happen in there. Now, another aspect that Zoho Analytics kind of works out is the whole departmental analytics, for example, within the context of the CRM reporting, you are unable to blend data across different modules and come up with reports. So Zoho Analytics kind of helps you there, and it helps you create all these departmental level analytics. I'm going to have a very, very uh, detailed demo as we go through this particular session. And uh, here you have an executive dashboard that shows you a lot of different things I can go through this. So here, it's an interesting dashboard that talks to you about your global customer base. And then this nice looking heat map talks to you about what's happening from a lead conversion standpoint across different parts of your business or services that you do across different domains. And how each of these lead generation strategies, such as cold calling, employee referral, sales, and all these things are working for you. right? So this is, again, uh, one of those interesting reports that I want to kind of get into. On the top left, it tells you a snapshot of what's happening to your revenue compared to the previous year and the current year. Then you go on to things like expenses that you have incurred, profits, customer satisfaction rate, and whatnot. Now, if you actually observe these data points that you see on this dashboard, they're coming from all the applications that are within Zoho One. The customer sat is coming from Zoho Desk. The expenses are coming from Zoho Books. And, in, and also, the profit and the revenue, all these numbers are coming in from Zoho Finance or Zoho Books. Now, in terms of the global customer base, if you look at this nice looking chart here that shows the map, this is from the CRM, where you track all the leads and looking at what's happening across the regions. And this is a report that comes from processing and crunching the data in Zoho CRM. Hiring versus attrition. Now, this is, again, a very powerful report that gives you a pulse of your business from a human resource perspective, where the data set is coming, actually, from Zoho people. And this is the icing on the cake. I now have data from Zoho people. I have data from Zoho Finance. And I, as a business, want to measure 
I, I want to have a KPI that tells me what's my revenue per employee. My financial application has no idea about how many employees I have in my company, whereas my people application has no idea about what my revenue is. So you were bringing in the data, figuring out, taking in the actual revenue, looking at the number of employees in your Zoho people application, bringing it together, and I'm creating a new KPI for my business. This is just a snapshot. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go inside this report. And let's get to the action. You do one.zoho.com, and if you have enabled analytics, automatically you will see this tab on the left-hand side that says analytics, and it shows you a list of all the reports or most recently accessed reports and dashboard. And in my case, these are some of the reports and dashboards I have accessed. And you also see the better next time dashboard that Victoria did in the previous session. And in my, in my case here, I want to talk to you about a 360 degree view of business where you have data from CRM, data from projects and desks and finance, and including campaigns. Nice looking chart, right? What is different here is the fact that I can explore this data. It's not a static report that's in front of me. I'm going to basically go in here and show you that I can change the visualization. Now, the consumer of the data set can decide how they want to visualize the data. This is not something that you would do within the context of the individual applications that we are talking about previously, like CRM and desk and whatnot. The reason is very simple, because it's not an analytics infrastructure, or it's not an analytics, an analytics database. You need to have the models. You need to have the, uh, the optimizations done to have and store the data the way it needs to be in an analytics platform. And also, the visualizations and the whole shooting match kind of come to the fore when you look at analytics. Now, let's change this into, let's say, a stacked bar chart. There you go. Any user who comes in, they can decide what that visualization has to be. Let's stay on this particular revenue versus expense or the profitability trend report and see what else we can do. So I have November 2018. The green uh, bar here indicates the revenue, and then the expenses are from, are kind of represented by the blue uh, icon here. So I can actually drill down and see what these expenses are actually coming from. I have the whole aggregation here, but if I want to have the uh, details of what these expenses have, what expenses have been incurred by my company, I go in here and take a look at the description. And it tells me what these transactions are pertaining to the expenses. So these are bills, these are invoices and whatnot, but clearly you kind of start drilling down and start accessing data. And actually, not actually accessing data, you're actually exploring the data for, at this point. So this is what is unique about the analytics platform, and that's why you would need one. And this is actually something that we have been working on this did not happen in three years or four years. There's been a tremendous amount of research that has gone in, and it's been close to a decade since we have rolled out this product, and we are constantly you know, um, getting to the next frontier as far as the capabilities of this platform is concerned. Another aspect to know here is, in terms of the capability, uh, is this a pure play analytics platform, or is this only meant for the Zoho ecosystem apps. It's pure play, yes. This is the equivalent of your Tableau of the world and the Power BI's and the clicks of the world. You can actually bring in data from any data source. We have customers that are in the telco space, that are in the logistics space, and they don't use any of our Zoho apps at all. They bring in data purely for analytics into this framework, and the biggest customer base of Zoho analytics is not actually Zoho at all. These are not people who are using Zoho CRM or any other Zoho ecosystem apps. Mostly, they're third-party apps. With that, let's look at a few other interesting things. I'm now going to launch myself into the actual URL because I want to get some more details. So I have a whole lot of visualizations here. I'm just going to pick up the executive dashboard again. And how do you access this dashboard? How, how interesting is it that your users who are consuming the actual output of this data set are sitting in, let's say, a Zoho Creator app 
or a Zoho Finance application or a Zoho CRM application, would you actually want them to kind of jump between apps, go to analytics.zoho.com? You don't have to do that. People can actually share this entire visualization with third-party applications, which is called the whole embedded analytic spiel. A lot of people talk about it, but these are things that are enabled and the platform has been capable of from day one. So how do I share this? How do I, you know, I have this data set, that's cool, but here is a nice little trick. I go to the share icon, and I'm gonna say, get me a URL for this view. And just to kind of show you how it looks, I'm not gonna actually embed this into another application. I'm just gonna copy this URL here. That's about it. You actually don't have to log in or do anything. As, again, in the context of Zoho One, this becomes very interesting because you're already signed on to the Zoho ecosystem. So you can automatically use or apply the APIs in Zoho Analytics, bring all these visualizations as embeddable URLs and embed it into any application that you want to embed it into. Like I said, CRM projects or be with whatever, you can do that. And when you see a dashboard, is this all you can do? Actually not. You can open up the whole report. And here, you're looking at the data for this year, but you can specify filters, dynamic filters. Again, these are not static filters. Based on what uh, period that you choose, it is going to bring up the data from the database and show it out to you. Now, just to kind of make it interesting. Any guesses on the largest database that you think Soho Analytics has? One billion rows of live data for live analytics. Again, nothing is archived. This is a logistics company that's using the analytics platform to process one billion rows of data for real-time analytics, right? So the platform is extremely versatile as far as scalability goals. We have all the uh, black magic behind the scene wherein we compress the data, we have the right data models to deal with all these kind of use cases, and also some of our telco customers are are really, really big in terms of the data set. We saw departmental specific analytics, and then this whole cross-departmental is pretty obvious. Third-party data analytics. Now, let's say you're running a business. Let's say you are generating leads using Google Ads, and based on the ads that you place, you're gonna bring in leads into your CRM. Your leads are then nurtured, they become deals, the deals then start paying up, and then you wanna look at the ROI of a campaign that you do on Google, right? So let's take a look at what such a report looks like. So given that we're talking about ROI, I'm actually taking data from Google Ads, I'm taking data from Zoho CRM, I'm then pulling data from Zoho Finance and pulling all these reports together. Now, a lot of blending happens, and all this blending happens behind the scene. It's done all that you need to do. The beauty of the system is all that you need to do is bring in the data sources. That's why if you look at the Zoho Analytics platform, unlike other pure play platform providers, we don't have a millions or hundreds and hundreds of connectors that we build. We have a lot of connectors thanks to Zapier, However, when Zoho starts building all these connectors, given the fact that we have play in across multiple domains, such as sales, marketing, finance, and support, and collaboration, what we do is we diligently spend time when we get a data source from such a, a system such as a CRM, be it Microsoft Dynamics, be it Salesforce, or Zoho CRM, we spend the time to create a model. If you look at other systems, they only help you to suck the data, but you need a data analyst or a data modeler to start creating models for you. In the case of Zoho Analytics, we have been very diligent in terms of how we go about this play, and we actually create, pre-create the models. And if it is existing, any of the existing plugins that we actually support, you don't have to do the modeling. But if you bring in your own data set, let's say, hey, you know what, I'm a shipping company, I have some auto management system that's outside of Zoho Creator. That's a standalone application I've been using for 50 years in my business. I have data in my SQL, my CSV files. Not to worry, you can bring in that data set and then Zoho Analytics will help you to create the models. It'll tell you, hey, by the way, you brought in this data set and I see there's a column here 
that has some ID matching with some data set that you have in your CRM. So it really gets very detailed when you start working at the back end from a data modeling and a data prep perspective. It's pretty uh, mature and pretty comprehensive. We have a few interesting things. Like I said, I think I already alluded to this earlier. We create ready-to-use domain-specific models and charts and dashboards that are created. Like, and another thing that I probably want to add here is when you connect to an existing data source that we support, what happens is it just does not only create the models, the reports and dashboards are also canned and they're pre-created. Now, is that the end of the world? No. If you know what you're doing, if you know that uh, what the data set is, as a business analyst, you want to go in there and create your own reports and dashboards, you're absolutely going to be able to do that. Sharing and publishing reports, we talked about it, alluded to it. Uh, you can actually share it as an embeddable URL, or you can just embed into a third-party application. And one of the other things that we recently enabled is collaborative commenting. So when you look at a dashboard or a report, and you have multiple, a team of people who are looking at it, you can go in and put in information about what insights are you deriving based on the visualization that you're seeing. This is something that's pretty new. It's been rolled out probably in November, December timeframe, I guess. And this whole interaction is stored as a part of analytics. Finally, um, another important uh, function or feature that we enabled in the latest release is the ability to send, set up what we call data alerts. Smart data alerts is a way for you to kind of set up a watchdog on a specific report. Let's say something like profitability. And maybe you, would, you prob probably provide data on a daily basis or a weekly basis, and you want to set up thresholds, right? If, it, if my profitability or weekly profitability goes be below a certain value, I want to be notified. I don't want to be logging in on a daily basis or a weekly basis to see what's happening to my data. I need to be notified. So you can set up what we call smart data alerts. I can get into that real quick. And then Zoho Analytics will start polling or looking for this information on a specific schedule that you set up. So let's take this report. And it tells me the columns that have been used or the aggregation on what columns has been enabled on this report. So I have average lead acquisition cost. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the average lead acquisition cost and then specify if the value is greater than. And how often do you want to check this? Hourly, weekly, daily? I would go daily because this is a Google ad campaign. And you want to do it at 1 a.m. in the morning every day. And you can also specify if you want to generate this notification only if there is a change. If there is no change, you don't want to be notified just because there's a check happening behind the scene. And I would, for all practical purposes, enable this check. What do you want to do? Do you want to come inside Zoho Analytics and receive an in-app app, uh, notification? Or do you want an email to be sent? An email is probably a good idea because it gives you a lot more flexibility. And when you say email, it also gives you the option to include the report. So now, you're not looking at analytics on a daily basis. It's doing the checks for you when there is a violation of a threshold it's going to send out an email with the actual report for you to access. A little bit more, we have all these connectors that we have enabled for specific domains, as you can see. It's just not limited to Zoho. Uh, you can bring in third-party data set. You can connect to cloud data sources, such as Amazon, uh, RD, I mean Redshift, and whatnot. Everything is built in. Uh, 